Hi and welcome to this tutorial on uh, paracetamol synthesis. So this is the structure of paracetamol. It's a phenol group here and in the para position we have an acetamide. That's why sometimes um, it's referred to as uh, acetaminophen in the US but in the UK we call it paracetamol because the um, it's a para acetamide uh, phenol group. But these are these are just uh, common terms for the same compound. Okay, so that's paracetamol, a uh, very common analgesic, and we'll have a look at how we can use the freeze and the Beckman rearrangements to uh, synthesize this molecule. So first of all, we'll draw phenol. That's phenol. And the first thing we need to do is esterify it with an acetal group, so we use uh, acetic anhydride and we use uh, aluminium chloride as the Lewis acid in this case. So the freeze rearrangement actually um, uses a Lewis acid and it can go in the ortho or the para position. So this is uh, um, acetic anhydride, that's an acetal group there and that's uh, acetic anhydride, just got an oxygen in the middle. So it's just a very good source of um, the acetal group. So we're going to put on the phenol. So just get rid of them. Okay, so first thing to do is sterify the phenol. So basically, we're going to make that. So just get rid of that. So here's the mechanism. So the first thing to do is actually activate the uh, acetic anhydride with the Lewis acid and the most available oxygen lone pairs are on the carbonyl there so they'll coordinate into uh, the Lewis acid aluminium chloride in this case making it susceptible to attack of that uh, carbonyl carbon there and you just get a quick rearrangement and the acetyl group goes on quite nicely so here's the structure So we've got our uh, uh, methyl ester there now. We just need to sort out the charge. So we got all the charges are balanced. Just need to sort them out. Uh, lose a proton to the solution. We're in acidic conditions anyway, so that's perfectly acceptable. And that gives us the acetal group. So the next stage is the freeze rearrangement as you can see here. So let's just draw that structure out again, let's draw the ester out again. And we still will continue to use the aluminium chloride as the Lewis acid. And basically we need to activate that ester and we'll do that by coordinating to the aluminium chloride like that. Just put that bond in there. I've used kind of a dative bond because it's gonna it's gonna rearrange a little bit over there, so that oxygen will coordinate there, giving the uh, electrons back to the carbonyl oxygen. So you get the activated species there. It's a bit like uh, activating the phenol. Now no one's too sure about how this mechanism pursues. There's been quite a lot of mechanistic studies, and um, I urge you to have a look at the uh, uh, tutorial on the freeze rearrangement. I don't think it's up at the moment, but it should be up uh, pretty soon. It's quite an interesting uh, reaction to uh, investigate from a mechanistic point of view. So basically the, uh, the activated complex collapses like that and you get a rearrangement. I've drawn it in this, um, in this fashion here, but the, the actual uh, carbonium ion there from the carbonyl uh, actually still coordinates to the benzene ring. So it doesn't doesn't quite leave uh, the vicinity, and we prefer to either go on the ortho or the para position, depending on the temperature. Really, so we just adjust the temperature to make it go in in the right position, and then all we've got after the uh, rearrangement is um, rearomatization. So we lose that proton there that indicated. So the next stage after that is um, formation of an oxime. In, 
In order to do that, we use uh, hydroxalamine, as we've got here in acidic conditions. So that, that carbonyl should be protonated first, actually. So it's an activated carbonyl, which then gets attacked with the hydroxalamine. Now, hydroxalamine is actually a very strong uh, nucleophile because it's got um, the oxygen next to it. It's called the alpha effect. And I'll, I'll do a tutorial on that. And all we're doing now, we're just very quickly, uh, we're just going to um, condense the product to lose water here. So the overall aim is to lose water as a leaving group and give us our oxygen. And we do that in a, a series of protonation steps. So the first one was uh, forming the tetrahedral intermediate, and now we're going to protonate the hydroxy that um, from the carbonyl, and then the nitrogen lone pair will push out uh, water, just like this. Here we go. And then all we've got then to do is sort out our um, charge. So if you see here, we've got the protonated oxime in order to isolate that and have it in, in our hands, if you will, just need to neutralize it to give us the oxime there. Okay, so that's that's how we make the oxime, just make that red so you can see it. Okay, so that we're nearly there now. You can see it's, it's almost got the, the shape of uh, paracetamol. We've got the... Uh, Acyl group in the, uh, in the form of an oxygen now. So this is when we come on to the second stage of the. I just get rid of these. Come on to the second stage of the uh, rearrangement synthesis, if you will, which will look at the Beckman rearrangement. I urge you to uh, have a look at the Beckman rearrangement tutorial. Uh, it goes in a bit more detail than we're going to do here. And it's a very good rearrangement of oxymes. Okay, so the final stage now is Beckman rearrangement. So again, we're in acidic conditions. We're just going to protonate the water, or sorry, the hydroxy group of the oxime to give us um, a good leaving group in the form of water. Now I've cheated a little bit. You might might notice the uh, uh, the hydroxy groups have gone trans to the phenyl group there, and that's, that's so I can um, do the mechanism this way. It's always going to be in equilibrium. There's going to be a mixture of the cisoid and the transoid form of that oxine, uh, but it's going to be the transoid form that will uh, migrate. So the phenyl group uh, will migrate. That will have the greater migratory aptitude. Uh, because of the electron density around that carbon atom there. So we've lost water, we get this uh, uh, nitrillium ion, if you will, and then it's just a matter of water coming back. So water comes back, uh, I'm just going to draw the, the resonance form here, um, showing that it's reasonably stable um, uh, polar intermediate there, because the nitrogen lone pairs will stabilise that group. And it doesn't matter which which one you attack, you can either attack the positively charged vacant orbital and the carbon, the alpha carbon to the nitrogen, or you can attack, as I've done here, on a, a, a acetylene type of carbon. And that gives you uh, this species here, which still looks quite similar to the um, oxime. I'll just sort the charge out. But if, you, um, if you're familiar with uh, amides and, and uh, how things tautomerize, then you'll recognize that that's actually just a tautomer of uh, an amide. So we just all we need to do there is rearrange that, that tautomerism there. Rearrange that to the more stable form, which is the, um, the double bond on the carbon the oxygen there to give you a carbonyl and that gives us our acetamide product which is paracetamol. So bye for now.